But another era of superhero movies was to follow, and this is the era which we're still living in right now. It was kickstarted in the year 2000 with Bryan Singer's X-Men, followed then by movies like Spider-Man and Hellboy. Now, right off the bat, we can see where the overall evolution of superhero movies has gone. We have the original modern superhero movie era begin with the bright, iconic Superman, later reinvented by the iconic yet dark and edgier Batman, and now this new era begins with human, flawed, morally complicated characters never present before. The alienated minority portrayal of the X-Men from the original comics is definitely present in Singer's 2000 movie, and even more so in its sequel, X2, X-Men United. Singer himself is a homosexual, so he was likely able to relate quite a bit to these characters, helping to make their roles as outcasts more authentic. And the villain in the films has motivations that are far more grounded and believable than someone who does bad things just because they feel like it. The villain, Magneto, is the leader of a group of mutants who seek retribution from humanity for their persecution. A hero of the story, Professor Xavier, is an old friend of Magneto, and the leader of a group of mutants who strive for peace and reconciliation between all mutants, as well as all people who aren't mutants. The conflicts present in these movies can definitely be allegorized with those of the civil rights movement of the mid-20th century. Xavier's peace-seeking attitude echoes that of Martin Luther King Jr., and Magneto's more aggressive, hard-edged attitude can be compared to that of Malcolm X. Another human and relatable hero comes along in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Peter Parker, an awkward, troubled adolescent, receives incredible powers. At first, he seeks personal gain, but a personal tragedy that his selfishness caused, as well as some wise words from his uncle, lead him to grow and change his attitude, always remembering that, with great power, comes great responsibility. Each Spider-Man movie would go on to convey kind of an overarching, relatable moral theme, having villains who are more sympathetic as well. Spider-Man 2 had a theme of sacrifice. In it, Peter Parker wishes to give up his role as Spider-Man to have his own personal happiness with Mary Jane, but sees the problems that would persist and the lives that would be hurt if he left and pursued his own interests. So he sacrifices his dreams in favor of a higher calling to serve the greater good. Spider-Man 3 would again be heavy and actually grow darker than its predecessors. This film's production was actually a bit of a mess, resulting in a final product that isn't as solid of a final film as the first two were but it's still rich and exciting, and still conveying moral ideas and obstacles for Spider-Man to overcome. This film sees Peter Parker falling to the sin of pride. He becomes intoxicated and kind of drunk on just his own glory. As a result, he grows selfish and abusive, leading to pain and sorrow for him and those around him. He ends up having to, again, look beyond himself, let go of his pride, and see that even enemies are human like us and humility and forgiveness are needed in a world full of opposition. This progression toward dark tones would be a consistent pattern in this new era of superhero movies. Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins was a big player in this change. After becoming shallow and silly in the 90s, one of comics' biggest icons would be reinvented with a dark and realistic tone that would characterize much of the superhero genre in this new millennium. It is dark like Burton's Batman before it, but it's more intense and grounded, not to mention more morally complex. For example, in the 1989 film, Batman's parents were killed by the Joker back before he became the Joker, when he was just a criminal. So the drama is more personal and contained. But Batman Begins stuck closer to the source material, having Batman's parents killed by one of the many desperate criminals in Gotham City. They characterized not an archetypal single bad guy, but a whole slew of social and economical problems, where crime and corruption in the city have led many people to such desperate and violent behavior. It's this more relevant and believable type of evil that Batman sets out to bring justice to. Besides setting a darker and more mature tone for future superhero films, Batman Begins also set a benchmark for quality. Christopher Nolan's independent filmmaking roots showed an increased value of character and plausibility. These things would grow to become more and more important in superhero films. Another skilled director with indie roots, John Favreau, would direct the smash hit Iron Man. Like Nolan before him, he made a movie that showed how such a fantastic hero like Iron Man could plausibly exist in a realistic world. And like Batman Begins, it established its own solid tone and charm that made the characters and atmosphere refreshing and entertaining. A unique hero, Tony Stark is a billionaire, an arms manufacturer, and a party-going playboy. 
After being abducted by terrorists and forced to build a weapon of terror, he rebels and attempts to use his money and technological skill towards something that helps people rather than killing them. As he says in the film, I want to protect the people that I put in harm's way. Such remorse over his weapons manufacturing roots was also present in the comic book source material. Tony Stark in the comics was also the first alcoholic superhero, turning to drinking when his company is threatened by the very real and modern threat of a corporate takeover. It's such struggles that characterize Iron Man as a very human superhero, besides the fact that, like Batman, he has no superpowers. Also, in comic book artist George Lucas's book, Iron Man Beneath the Armor, Lucas considers Iron Man to be the first political superhero, a politically contentious hero for politically contentious times, as he writes. However, with this progression towards humanization of superheroes, a comeback of Superman resulted in a very interesting mix of old and new. Brian Singer, the man who kickstarted the modern era of superhero films with X-Men, comes out with Superman Returns a film which tied itself very closely with the tone and look of the original 1978 Richard Donner Superman, although Superman in this film deals with more human struggles, and the film has some darker, more brutal scenes than anything present in the 1978 film. Superman in this film is an interesting, compelling mix of iconic divinity and sympathetic humanity. Building off of an allegory touched upon in the 1978 film, Superman is strongly allegorized with Jesus Christ. They can be a great people, Kal-El, they wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good. I have sent them you, my only son. Along with some very Christian imagery, such as the crucifixion and the empty tomb upon Christ's resurrection, Superman's mythic roots are built upon even more. But at the same time, however, Superman deals with common human problems of regret, heartbreak, and alienation. In this film, Superman returns to Earth after having left for several years to search for remnants of his destroyed homeworld. Hoping to return to the world and the woman that loved him, he instead comes back to a world that no longer seems to need him, and a former love that now has a fiancé and a child. Superman has to deal with the fact that he isn't one of these people, questions his value in this world, and struggles between not belonging in this world and being needed as a guiding light as well. Superman Returns was a story of Superman's redemption and return to glory that showed how, even for Superman, very human problems of the heart can be just as painful and powerful as kryptonite. It perhaps was this balancing between sympathy and divinity that caused some people to dislike Superman Returns, leading it to underperform at the box office. But personally, I consider this to be truly one of the absolute best superhero films ever made, ranking right up there with Spider-Man 2, X2, and, oh yeah, that other Batman movie.